Right, today we're doing a little GCSE reminder for unit 2.6, which is data representation and specifically the sound aspect. We'll go again. Okay. <laughs> you don't have to stop and start again. But Right, today we're going to do a little recap reminder on data representation unit 2.6 for the OCR GCSE specification and specifically the sound aspect of that spec particularly looking today at how uh, the sound gets into a computer and how it's represented by the computer. So imagine yourself over this side, this uh, little, little face emitting some sound, okay? And these vibrations in the air are an analog signal. That means they're always changing, not measured. You can zoom in and zoom in on it and you'll see more and more detail. Computers don't do well with analog. They need to be able to convert this to digital. So how do we sense these vibrations in the air? Well, what we do is we use a microphone. I'm sure you've all encountered a microphone before. It's got inside it a little plastic disc with a magnet in the middle. So side on view, it looks like this. And that has got a connection to a copper coil. As that magnet vibrates inside that copper coil, this analog signal is sent down the cable and into your computer. The computer at this stage has got a piece of hardware called an ADC, an analog to digital converter. That analog to digital converter takes that analog signal, that wave, and it measures it at regular intervals. Let's see what that looks like. So you've got a sound wave that's happening over time. That sound wave needs to be measured and so the computer will take measurements at regular intervals. Those measurements get stored by the computer. It uses, let's say for CD quality audio, CD quality, you're looking at 44,100 measurements every single second. That's why we say 44.1 kilohertz. So 44,100 measurements every single second get stored to represent that analog sound wave. Now, you can't just use a one or a zero, an on or an off to store that sound wave. You have to have a sliding scale, and that's what we call the bit depth. For CD quality audio, you're looking at a scale that goes from zero to 65,536, which coincidentally, is 16 bits. So you represent each data point with 16 bits of binary, and you do that 44,100 times every second, and you do that for two channels because CD audio is in stereo. That's a lot of ones and zeros. That's about one and a half million ones and zeros for just a second of CD audio. And your analog to digital converter is taking that analog signal and it's creating this binary signal out the other end of it. So it's storing all of those ones and zeros. It's measuring this curve every single, well, 44,100 times per second and storing that on your computer's storage device. Let's, uh, let's just mock up a quick hard drive there. So it's storing that on your computer's storage device. Now, when you want to play that sound back, it's not gonna be exactly the same as your analog curve. It's gonna be as close as it can be, but it won't ever be exactly the same. And so your digital signal, all the ones and zeros that made up those measurements goes into well, if it was an analog to digital converter first time, this time it's a digital to analog converter. It takes it the other way around. It tries to rebuild that curve as closely as possible based on the measurements that it's given. And different qualities of digital to analog converter will do this in different ways. So now your signal, your new analog signal comes out of your digital to analog converter and into an amplifier. That amplifier can then boost that signal to power a loudspeaker, which can then produce sound waves. 
And so you've gone from sound waves through a microphone, your analog signal into an analog to digital converter, and then into the storage device. It can be retrieved from that through a digital to analog converter, amplified, and then that loudspeaker can move air and create those sound waves for a person to be able to hear at the other end with their ear. Now all of this happens inside a computer. It doesn't look like that in terms of layout. The ADC and the DAC these days are usually on the motherboard, but these are chips that whose specific job is to measure analog wave signals and find those data points, and also to rebuild analog wave signals from a bunch of data points. The number of samples, and that's what these data points are called, the number of samples that's taken every second is called the sample rate. That's often something that comes up in exams. For CD audio, we're looking at 44,100 samples per second. The sample interval, the sample interval is the gap between samples. Now here's where your exam stuff comes in. More samples means more data points. More data points means you're storing more bits so you get a larger file size. Also, if your sample interval is smaller, you're storing more bits, you get a larger file size. And with that, you can rebuild a curve that's more closely matched to the original. So more data points means that you can have a better quality audio experience from a higher sample rate, a smaller sample interval, larger file size, and that's all you're ever going to be asked for in the exam on Unit 2.6, Sound Representation in a Computer.